I want you to think of someone who made a difference in your life. Close your eyes and picture them. I'll wait. Keep them closed. Picture what they look like, where you first met, how they sound when they speak. Got it? Good. You guys can open your eyes now. When I think of the people who helped shape me into the person that I am today, this is what I think of. You see, I grew up being influenced primarily by the people that I met online. In order for this to make sense, we have to backtrack a little bit. This is a photo of me and my grandma when I was a little girl. Nowadays, she's the only member of my family that I'm in contact with. I was emotionally abused growing up. By the time that I was a teenager, my mom and immediate family had convinced me that I was vain, selfish, self-centered, and that I didn't deserve to be loved. After my first long-term boyfriend broke up with me, my mom heard me crying and she said, I hope you don't cry like that in front of your friends, because pretty soon, they're going to get tired of hearing about it and they're going to stop talking to you. Another time, my nan, my mom's mother, told me, you know, Allison, we love you because you're family, but none of us like you as a person. What did my mom say? She's right. Needless to say, I grew up a very anxious and unhappy young person. Unfortunately, my anxieties were only heightened by the fact that my parents moved us to a suburb 45 minutes away from my school and all of my friends. Do you guys remember this sound? So for those of you who may have forgotten, or who are too young to remember, that's the sound your PC used to make as it connected to dial-up internet. Except, I didn't even have dial-up internet at home. I connected every night by using the trial button on my parents' Net Zero install which let me try the internet for five minutes at a time. Then it would disconnect me, and I would spend my nights connecting, getting disconnected, and reconnecting while I tried to talk to my friends. Eventually, though, this got boring, and I started writing to pass the time. I was really into anime and video games as a teenager, and so I started publishing the stories that I was writing on a website called fanfiction.net. Being a member on fanfiction.net was an eye-opening experience for me because for the first time in my life, I started to receive feedback that wasn't just negative. I had somehow stumbled onto a community of people who accepted me and my creative work at face value, and it changed my life. I started to become a more confident writer, and eventually, I started blogging on the website blogger.com, where I would meet a whole new group of people who would further change my life. By this point, though, I was kind of a hot mess. I was living on my own, and I was working a government job that could not have been farther from what I wanted to be doing. I was miserable, and I knew that I needed to change. So, I applied to university, and I quit my safe government job. My dad, a lifelong civil servant, lost it when I told him. He hung up the phone on me and didn't talk to me for the next six months. My mom wouldn't let me move back home into my old room, so I couldn't save money for school. Without any supports, I did what I'd always done. I wrote my way through it. I shared my anger and confusion and frustration at how my parents were reacting, and again, I found a community of people who went out of their way to support me. Quitting my job and going to university was one of the hardest things that I have ever done. And I honestly don't know if I would be here today without the nights spent emailing and messaging with the people that I met online. In 1786, Thomas Jefferson wrote, who then can so softly bind up the wound of another? as he who has felt that same wound himself. He was talking about empathy, and in a time where we spend so much of our time online, 
It's only natural that we would start to form digital communities around our shared interests and experiences. Fanfiction.net, which I mentioned, is one of those spaces. Another is DeviantArt, a website where artists can share and discuss their creative works. DeviantArt was founded in 2000 and currently has over 26 million members who have submitted over 251 million submissions. By 2010, users on the site had already reached 1.4 million favorites and 1.5 million comments every single day. So, what kind of community is DeviantArt? Here's how they describe themselves. Artists love us because we are an inclusive and supportive community. We help them find their identity through self-expression. DeviantArt isn't just some website. It is a 17-year-old digital community where artists can share and grow and support one another over a common interest in creating art. Most of us wouldn't think of Facebook as anything other than just a place to waste time. But in fact, there are thousands of private and public support groups that make a difference in people's lives every single day. There are support groups for people battling depression. There are support groups for parents who have high needs kids. There are support groups for cancer survivors and for the families who weren't so lucky. Online support groups can provide opportunities for friendship and support for people who struggle with issues like mobility, which can affect many people with chronic health conditions. In 2010, the Pew Research Center found that 37% of people living with a chronic health condition found information about their health on a website, online group, or blog. One respondent wrote, an online support group helped me learn about my disease and provided comfort in knowing that my symptoms were not just in my head and helped me take steps to adjust to living with a chronic condition. Lots of other digital communities are specifically set up with the intention of supporting group members. On the forum website Reddit, for example, there's a subsection or a subreddit called R Relationships. The top rule for posting reads, this sub is about helping people in need, and moderators are tasked with monitoring comments and responding to content that is flagged as inappropriate. Over 600,000 people subscribe to this thread and can post about topics like infidelity, dating, breakups, non-romantic problems, and updates. Now, I like updates best of all, because it subtly encourages people to come back and share with the group again. It says, you are a member of this community and we care about you. Most of us wouldn't think of the world of video games as being somewhere that we can feel accepted online. But not too long ago, I was watching the new season of Bill Nye Saves the World and the popular YouTuber and Twitch streamer, Jonna May, or Mrs. May, had this to say. I feel like I'm more social now. In high school, outside of playing games, I didn't have a lot of friends. But when I was in video games, I had a voice. I could be whoever I wanted to be. Now, I'm a lifelong gamer, so I know all too well the bigotry and the misogyny that can sour the experience for many of us. But more and more gamers are starting to look just like me and Jonna May. Right now, almost half of all gamers are female, and over a third of all gamers are over 35. So this idea that gamers are just these burnouts living in their parents' basements, well, true in some cases, <laughs> is becoming an increasingly antiquated stereotype as the demographics of the people who play games start to change to foster more inclusive communities as a result. So, why does any of this matter? Why am I up here trying to convince all of you that the internet isn't the cesspool that you've read about? It matters because the internet has a perception problem. Many of the people that I talk to feel like the internet is making us worse. They only see the Facebook fights. 
they only see the Twitter meltdowns. And they only see the cyberbullying that, unfortunately, too many kids experience nowadays. They don't see the dedicated forums. They don't see the kind blog comments. And they don't see the private messages of support that are sent every single day. And honestly, it's easy to see why. This word cloud is made up of words currently being used on social media to describe the United States Congress. But if your Facebook feed looks anything like mine does, these words and phrases probably feel familiar to you no matter where you live and no matter who you voted for. In a time when we are becoming increasingly polarized, politically and otherwise, we need to start pouring our energy into digital spaces that promote values like respect, positivity, and support. So here's what I want you to do. Put your hand up if you're passionate about something. We're at TED, so I know you guys are all passionate people. Put your hands up. Look around the room and look at all those passionate people around you. See, isn't that great? So what I want you to do, now that I know you have it, and I know you all have it too, I want you to find a digital community dedicated to that passion. Spend some time there. Ask questions. Give support. Put effort into being a part of your digital community, and they will welcome you with open arms, I promise you. Because at the end of the day, we all just want to feel accepted and understood, whether that's by the people in our daily lives, or by people who look like this. And who knows? Maybe you'll meet someone online who will change your life, too. Thank you. <laughs>